Okay, good. All right, so um, we'll use the last, how long do I have? 20 minutes, all right, <laughs> uh, that's fine. Um, anything I don't cover, I'll have a video, uh, send a recording about it anyway. Okay, so um, the idea of this course is we start with understanding vectors and then understand everything sort of leads on one after another. So I want to, I know there's a glare over there, so I'll try to not write there too much. Um, yeah, uh, and so sort of each topic leads on to another. So we'll, um, make sure you do understand one topic uh, before you go to another, otherwise it will be very confusing, right? So, um, uh, and then is forces and motion or kinematics. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, energy and then we'll talk about momentum and then we'll talk about rotational motion. So this is sort of the, the basics of all of physics. Um, uh, th with this, these sort of set up all the groundwork um, that you can study anything more interesting later on in 3B and 3C. So how do waves work? How do electricity work? They all rely on this foundation. In some sense, all of them are addressing the things of how and why do things move? This is the central question of physics 3A. Okay. In ex other than chapter, uh, everything before chapter five addresses things moving in a straight line. And then we talk about things uh, rotating. So they will spin as well. And now this seems like a very narrow question. However, if you think about it, if you want to understand how the universe work, you can actually rephrase that question in every single question you can think of. Uh, and I'll invite you to challenge yourself to think, think about it now, right? Any question you have about how does anything in the universe work, I can rephrase it into how do things move. For example, if you want to understand uh, why does the earth go around the sun? Well, that's obviously how do things move. Why do apples fall to the ground? That's obviously how do things move, but something even more tricky, like how does electricity work? If I flip a switch, the light bulb will come on. Well, that doesn't look like that, but if you think about it, that's just the movement of electrons through a circuit, through a wire, and more, more, more physically, right? How do these particles move, these electrons move through a wire? Um, how does the universe begin? Well, um, we know that it comes from a big bang. Uh, that's really just how do all the galaxies and all the stars, how do they initiate from a single point in space, right? So, um, and how would the universe end? For example, I study that question as well in my research. And you will uh, you can rephrase that to think about it as, well, we're sort of, all the galaxies are sort of expanding away from each other. Will they ever re-collapse? Will they ever regroup together? Basically, this is the question of how do things move like that, okay? So even though it starts off as a very boring question of like, okay, uh, I just care about, you know, it looks like you're just caring about balls rolling down slope or pendulums moving back and forth. This is really setting the foundation of studying the rest of physics three and all of the rest of physics. Okay. Now, what, what, is, what, what is all this, right? So um, to do that, there's actually two ways to, under, to, to analyze how things move. It's called a force perspective and the energy perspective or the force approach and the energy approach. The force approach was invented by Newton. All right, we'll start with um, uh, our friend Isaac and uh, he'll teach us how do forces work. And then later on, there are people called Lagrange, Laplace, a bunch of French guys. <laughs> so a bunch of French guys and, and they, they invented a different way to understand how do things move. It's completely different from forces. So essentially in chapter three, to some degree, you can forget about everything you learn in chapter two and you, just, you can still understand how, how, do th how and why do things move. Um, now, both approach has pros and cons, right? That's why we learn both, because in some scenario, that way is much more difficult and, and vice versa to analyze, right? So that's why we'll show you both. There's pros and cons of both. 
And then momentum is basically the theory of collision, of when, uh, when things collide. How, that means that we'll start to study two objects. In chapter two and three, there, these are motions of one object. There'll be, uh, just, just think about does an, how does an apple fall to the ground? You know, why do the earth go around the sun? That kind of thing, right? Just one object. And then we'll look at two objects, how they interact, right? Some of you mentioned physics is about how objects interact. That's very correct. Um, that's the theory of momentum. And then finally, we'll talk about uh, the theory of rotation as well. So that's the big plan, right? And vectors is sort of the um, main mathematics to do that. And this is a topic that a lot of people find it confusing. And, um, and it, I think um, they're overthinking it. Uh, and today I'll give you the idea, um, introduce you with a basic idea. Uh, so you, you really realize that it's a very simple thing, okay? And um, yeah, let's see if I have any questions here. All right, very good questions. Um, I'll answer them later on. Um, okay, so let's start with vectors. Okay. What are vectors? Now I'll give you a simple, simple, um, simple idea. Vector is an arrow. That is, that is all it is. And I'll call this chapter the mathematics of arrows. Let's see if it's below the glare. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What what does that mean? Yeah. Um. You we'll talk about you. You'll see in a second that you you, you might have heard of it. These things have magnitude and, and direction. They're all true. But I don't want you to forget, as we learn all the algebra, all the complicated things about vectors, fundamentally, it's an arrow, right? What do I mean? It's this. That's an arrow, OK? And what do I mean by mathematics of arrow is now that if I give you a couple of different arrows, we can build a whole mathematical theory of how to add, subtract, in some sense, multiply. Um, I will put it in double quotes. It's a little bit tricky. Um, and et cetera. We can actually do mathematics, like do algebra with arrows. Okay. Um, why is that useful? The next question is well, don't worry about it just yet in chapter one. Let's just try to see what that means. How can we add and subtract arrows, right? Or how do I multiply arrows or even divide if, if it even makes sense to divide um, these things? And then we'll see that they're incredibly useful to understand forces and a lot of things about physics, right? But I want to just sort of get this out of the way first, okay? So let's start with sort of the proper definition. If you read any book um, uh, or you look up what is a vector, the formal definition will tell you it's this. It's a it's a directed line segment that obeys the triangle rule of addition. Okay. So there's a couple of couple of uh, jargons over here, right? So first of all, what does line segment mean? Secondly, what does direct line segment mean? And thirdly, what on earth is the triangle rule of addition? All right, we'll address them one by one. The first part is very simple. A line segment, well, mathematically, in mathematics, a line, when we say a line in mathematics, it usually means a line that extends out to infinity on both sides. That's a line, okay? A line segment is a finite one that has a starting point and an ending point. That's a line segment. Simple. A direct line segment is a line segment with a direction, hence an arrow. That's all a vector is, okay? So a lot of people think that it's very abstract, very complicated, that's it. It's a, it if I say this, if you want to confuse everyone, just say it's a direct line segment. If you want to make everyone understand what you're talking about, it's an arrow, okay? Now, it has a criteria, it obeys the triangle rule of addition. Okay, so let's see what is that. Okay, and that answers our first question. We are going to learn a couple of things about vectors. We're going to learn how to add. We're going to learn how to subtract. Subtract. And we're going to learn how to scale multiply, what's called. Okay, there's more you can do with arrows. 
um, but those would be in the second lecture. So today we'll just address these three simple operations. Okay. All right. So um, now if I have an arrow like this and an arrow like this, and I say, I want you to add them. What is the natural way? Imagine you are the first person who are build, who's building this theory. Who, uh, you need to build a, build a theory of how to do math with arrows. What kind of rule will you come up with? All right, so the rule is sometimes called a tip to tail or head to tail or whatever you want to call it, All right? Rule. So what that means is um, you want to sort of do it in two steps. The first step is because you're comparing, uh, let me try to make that the same. Uh, you, you're trying to compare the vectors. So make them start at the same point first, like this, okay? Now, the second th uh, thing is, um, so make them start at the same point. So you can sort of talk about more sensibly, what do you mean by comparing them? And just, so just a side note as well, this starts to get a little bit confusing. So let me give it a name, all right? So let me call this vector A and I'll call this vector B or this arrow, right? Let me write it um, just underneath it so you can see it better, right? And uh, I'll comment on the notation a little bit. Notation just means the way we write the symbol. Um, I'll comment on that a little bit with this little half arrow thing on top, right? So anyway, this arrow is called A, this arrow is called B, right? So this is B, this is A, right? I'm just moving them together. And then now what you want to do is to move them from, connect them from tip to tail or head to tail. So take B, for example, and move it to the end of A, like that, right? So that's A, that's B. And the result, is A plus B. So this is the starting point from A, and that's the ending point of B. This new arrow, as you can see, is longer than both A and B, and also pointing in a different direction, is called A and A plus B, right? So that's all. So if I have this vector plus this vector, or this arrow plus this arrow, then, um, in some sense, you can skip the first step, but formally you should do it because you're comparing things at the same point. Um, but yeah, uh, essentially, let's say for simplicity, this one just points to the right, this one points to the top. Connect them um, from head to tail like this. Let's call this C and D, right? And this one, just for simplicity, I'll put dotted line is C plus D like this. I want you to notice that if I do it the other way around, so that's C, that's D, right? If I do it the other way around, um, instead, so that's, that's D, that's the same arrow, right? That's the same length and the same direction. Um, and I move C to connect C's tail to D's head, I'll get exactly the same answer. Um, and same as, same as this case, right? So I can either, move B over here, I'll do it in dotted line. Uh, I can either move B over here or I can move A over here. As you can see, the result will be the same. Okay, that result, in, in essence, that's just a statement of saying A plus B is the same as B plus A. Okay, so that's how you add arrows, very simple, okay. So before I go to subtracting and scale multiplying, uh, is there any questions? Okay, uh, good. So also um, let's now comment on a couple of things before I go to subtracting um, is uh, notation. Okay, so uh, what that means is just the way we write things. Um, so this, we want to contrast it with numbers, right? Um, numbers, another word for number is scalar okay. versus vectors. Okay. So for example, five is a number and this arrow is a vector, right? So uh, sometimes we like to, when we want to do algebra, when we want to add things, we want to give it a name instead of um, giving it a specific value. So sometimes we'll call it X equals to five. 
And this is exactly the same way. Um, you don't have to be scared about this scary notation. It's basically just giving this guy a name. And we want to remind ourselves this is an A represents uh, an arrow. Um, and for example, uh, you could use A over here, for example. So just using the algebra, um, you can tell that. So even if I don't look at what the value is, I can tell that this A later on, if I want to play with it, right? It's, it's a number or a scalar, okay? These words can be used interchangeably, all right? Um, I'll keep it as X, um, doesn't matter. Yeah, so that's a notation and um, property. So, or I should say the key property is that a number only has a value or a magnitude. So how large is that number? But a vector has both a magnitude and a direction. Okay, so sometimes you'll, you'll hear if you've studied, if you've seen this all before, you'll hear people say a vector is something that has a magnitude and direction. That's certainly correct. But more fundamentally, it's an arrow. Okay, any questions so far? All right, now how do we subtract arrows? Okay, well, for, if I have A, if I want to do A subtract B like this, right? You can think of it as A plus minus B because we already know how to do addition. You do a tip to tail. Um, also, you, you see it forms a triangle. So sometimes it's called a triangle rule of addition. Right? So I, I think I've, um, so that explains that. So as soon as, as, long, as soon as I understand how, what does negative B means, I'll be able to do this. So subtraction is not, nothing but addition, adding something that's negative, okay? If you think about it, right? So what is negative B? What's a negative vector or a negative arrow? Well, if B looks like this, negative B, if you are the inventor of this theory, you would naturally think, well, let's just have it pointing the other way. Right? The same magnitude or the same length pointing the other way is negative B. Okay, so uh, let's let's call let's let's define an A as well as just horizontal. Right? All right. So how do I do? Well, A plus B. First of all, A plus B would just be this plus this. Right? So this is the result. A plus B. How about A minus B? Well, then I will want A add the negative B. So that's a and just to make this clear right so that's a negative b goes this way so i want to connect it head to tail this way so this is negative b right so a minus b would be a plus negative b and let me use a different color right. so this new arrow is the arrow or vector of a minus b Okay. So far, so good. And last but not least, we'll end with scale multiplying. Sometimes just scale for short. Is I want to understand, for example, how do I do 3A? Well, if you, if you are the inventor of this theory of mathematics of arrows, well, you would, you would do the same thing as the theory of numbers, right? So 3a should just be a plus a plus a, right? So if, uh, uh, um, yeah, should I use the same a or should I use different a? I use the same a, right? So if that's a, so a plus a plus a would just be, you want to connect them like this, and if I use a different color, that's the result of 3A. Now, at some point, you want to don't think about it as adding things like this, um, but you want to think of it as a stretch. You want to think of it as stretching A by certain amount. Right? In this case, by, by three, like that, right? So you want to take, if this is A, then this is 3A. And so it's just three times of it, okay? 
All right, so that's the key things I will want to cover today. Now let me address a couple of FAQs, frequently asked questions. Um, this is called scale multiplied, right? Sometimes just called scale. Um, it's taking something and scaling it, right? Stretching it, and it's another word for stretching it. Now, what I have not talked about, I've not talked about, and we will talk about um, in the next class, is um, how do you actually multiply an arrow? Can I actually take an arrow and multiply something? Uh, and what, what, does, what, what on earth would that mean, right? Now, it turns out there's actually two ways to multiply arrow. There's something called a dot product and a cross product. So this is very interesting. Unlike numbers, this is where it really differs. Unlike numbers, there's two different ways of multiplying. In numbers, sometimes you write dot, sometimes you write cross, and they mean the same thing. But in, for arrows, there's actually two different meanings. Right? We'll look at what that means next time. Another, F, another question you might think of is, there's a lot of drawing going on. Um, is there a better way to do this? And yes, there is. All right. In, in some sense, there's two ways to do vectors. There's a geometric view. And there's the algebraic view. And today we have covered the geometric view, which will end here. Um, a lot of books and a lot of times when people learn vectors, they've skipped that and directly went to algebra. And that looks very um, confusing and abstract. Um, but hopefully this gives you an idea that vectors are just arrows. You can, in principle, do everything by drawing arrows. Um, however, at some point that gets tedious, right? So we want to develop a way to do the calculations of arrows without actually drawing it. And that's what we'll see tomorrow. All right. OK, that's the end of it. Any questions? Let's see. Uh, there's one last question. Can we add, multiply, subtract at the same time? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very good question. Um, if you do it, yeah, the same rules apply. The same order of, um, uh, of operations apply uh, to it. And uh, so this I haven't talked about yet. This is called a dot product, just a little preview right? and a cross product. Uh, but for the ones we talked about, I can have 3a plus 2b minus c. Um, let's put a brackets around here, let's put parentheses there. The same order, same rules of algebra, um, the two just get distributed. But remember, what does 2 mean? It's really just that plus that, right? So um, if you really think about what does 2 mean, it, it means this plus. So this thing, right, this, this parentheses plus itself two times. Um, and if you group them together, that's B plus B. So that's 2B. And that's minus C minus C. So that's minus 2C. So essentially, it looks like you can just distribute this 2 into here. Um, all the algebra rules do apply. Uh, we'll talk more about that the algebraic view in the next lecture. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, so in some sense, yeah, you do the you do multiply before you do addition and all those good stuff. All right, so thank you. Uh, we you stick with me for one and a half hours, um, and um, yeah, we'll we'll make videos um, uh, for you, and we'll see how this goes. Have a great day, and see you soon. You're welcome. Bye.